What is up everybody? Dan De Silva here from Ecom Dudes and welcome. Today's actually going to be an awesome little segment that I created. Now, if I can only guess, it's probably anywhere from 40 minutes, upwards of 60 minutes this entire video. But hang tight because everything you're about to watch here, you're going to love. I'm going to show you how you can create, literally how you can create an automated drop shipping store using Shopify and Oberlo. Now you're going to love the easy step-by-step -step process that I outlined for you and even at the end, I'm going to show you how to process an order. I go out there and show you that I make a test order and how it all works and ties back together. It's super, super simple. So without any further ado, let's hop into it and we're going to start off with the store creation because we're going to start from the very top and work down creating a store from literally scratch. All right. So let's so go ahead and uh, pretty much start off with the store creation and let's dive into my computer so you can see that right now. So the first step of our process is actually going out there and creating a Shopify store. Now this is actually fairly easy as well. What I would recommend you do is take a look in the description. We're going to provide you with a link to go and register to Shopify. Now as a little disclaimer, any link that you use, since this video is 100% free, we actually do get a little bit of credit if you go and sign up to Shopify through us. So whether or not you want to do that or not, that's still fine. If you don't want to give us credit for it, just go to Shopify.com. If you want to give us credit and get a discount for using us as well, then just take a look in the description. So that's something I wanted to go ahead and let you know. But whether or not, wherever you are, you come back to the Shopify main site, what you're going to want to do is click on get started. So what I'm going to be doing over here is going out there and creating a brand new store from scratch that we can install Oberlo on. So check this out. For our email address, I'm going to go ahead and use one of my emails. So give me one second. So when you click on get started, you can go ahead and register. So I'm going to just use no reply at ecomdudes.com and a password that I choose. Now I'm also going to go and let's say I'm selling Pitbull stuff. Okay, so Pitbull merchandise. I'm going to go ahead and just type in um, the happy bull. Okay, the happy pit, the happy Pitbull. I'm going to go ahead and create my store. Now it says sit tight. We're creating your entire store. This is a very, very easy process of going out there and having an entire store created for, for you from scratch. So here it goes. Are you already selling? You don't really need to enter this stuff over here. You can just click next. It's just a little survey that they have. Now I'm going to fill out all my information. So give me a few moments. After that, you're going to click on enter my store. And that is all you have to focus on. It's going to go ahead and pretty much load you right up into your store. Now, here we are inside of the back end of Shopify. Now, there's a few things that I want to show you before we continue. Your home page, okay? Once you start getting a plan set up, your domain set up, everything, you're, it's going to completely reorganize itself. You're going to have sales on the side, today's visitors, today's sales, etc. So it's going to look a little something like this over here, okay? So if you can tell, this is one of my stores, something that we just created recently, actually, where we're doing around over $1,500 a day, and it's performing very, very well, all right? So just keep this in mind. This is how it will look. But this is what it looks like right now, okay? So pretty pretty simple, all right? So over here we have orders. These are where all of your orders will come in from. Orders, drafts, abandoned checkouts, etc. Over here you have your products. You can have products, transfers, inventory, collections, gift cards, etc. Over here you have customers, the customer database of yours that you can import, export, however you feel. Then you have reports, you have your entire reports, and you have your reports dashboard. Now if you're using the third uh, party funnel application, which we're not really going to be using, but this is just for something that you know, a lot of third party funnel applications don't show up your sales and online store dashboard, they show up in the reports. Now over here we have discounts as well, you can create a discount. Sales channel, your online stores, this is where you go to edit your theme, blog posts, pages, navigations, domains, preferences. And in step number two, we're going to talk about theme installation. Apps as well. This is where you can install apps. And I will be letting you know which apps we'll be using aside with Oberlo as well to make your store run very, very smoothly. But then we have settings over here. Settings is where you go ahead and enter in your entire general store information, payments, checkout, shipping, taxes, notifications that we most likely won't ever use, files, again, we most likely won't ever use, sales channels as well. This is something that you will probably not use as of right now and then we have an account where we can upgrade and billing and all that information as well so again this is everything you need to know in regards to setting up an account right from the get-go and next we're actually going to dive in to theme installation so let's get to that right now now the second part of the process is all about theme installation now, when it comes to themes, we love premium themes, but again, we know not everybody could afford fifty to one hundred dollars for a theme. And sometimes, most themes they might run two, three, five hundred thousand dollars, and we know not everybody has that type of budget. 
So we're going to work with one of the themes that we absolutely love called Boundless. So let's go ahead right now and install Boundless so I can show you how to set up everything and how to work the theme and all the theme customization and everything you need to know. So let's hop back into my computer right now so I can show you how to do that. So when it comes down to themes, there is one particular theme that I absolutely love and it's called Boundless and it's inside the free themes of Shopify. So if we go to Shopify themes, you see everything down here. Take a look at this little bar right down here, right? Click on free. Now the free themes are going to populate. You have debut, jumpstart, venture, and then you have Brooklyn, simple, and boundless over here. Now I personally love boundless inside of the free themes if you're on a budget as well. So I'm going to click on boundless and just for our example purposes, I'm going to go ahead and install it inside of our store. So once you go and pretty much find your theme, right? I click on boundless, click on install theme. Now when you click install, you want to make sure that you enter your store URL. So check this out. We're going to go to the top over here and just copy the happypitbull.com. Oh, I'm sorry, the happypitbull.myshopify.com. Click login. All right, it's going to populate over here. I'm going to have to, there we go. Uh, if it makes you log in again, don't worry. It's standard procedure. Go ahead and log in again. But once you have this over here, you can click publish as my stores theme. Now this is pretty dang cool. It's going to go ahead and install it for you. And we're really going to dive into the theme together to show you how this entire theme can be broken down and what you should keep in mind when you're going out there and installing a brand new theme on your store. So what we're going to go ahead and do is customize theme. It's going to open up this little theme editor on the side over here. Very, very simple on what we have. And this is the entire theme as it's laid out right now. Pretty simple as well. So we have our slide bar menu, slideshow, action bar, rich text, homepage, newsletter, etc., footer, and everything else. And then we have general settings. Now, before we get started, I want to let you know just a few important things because, again, when it comes down to sections and how it aesthetically looks, it really boils back down to you. So I'm going to let you work around with that. But what I want to make sure you have in mind is the optimization and increasing your sales. So for checkout, click on checkout, all right, and scroll down. All right, where we have over here, All right, you keep on scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. So you can customize your checkout. So if you visit the admin over here, you can customize the entire checkout that's here. So full name required, last name, only required last name, only required first and last name. All right. Then we have company name, hidden address, line two, optional phone number, optional as well. Order processing, leave this checked off, okay? Use the shipping address as the billing address by default, leave it checked off. And then over here, ask for permission to send promotional emails to customers from your store. Put by default, okay? Just put by default. If they check it off, then it's up to them. So after an order has been paid, do not automatically fill, fulfill any of the order line items yet. And that's all you really have to go ahead and do. Now we're going to focus on the settings in just a little bit, but click on save and then go right back over here to check out. And again, just make sure everything is up to date in order to go ahead and have everything flowing smoothly. So there we go. Checkout has been uh, pretty much updated. All right. So take a look at this over here as well. So now we have checkout and we have a little bit of a slider for our checkout as well. What you want to do is click on cart. And instead of cart type drawer, make it a page. Now listen very closely to why you want to make this a page rather than a little cart. Because some mobile phones do not have this JavaScript code which allows that little cart to open. Meaning that if somebody from a mobile device that doesn't have JavaScript enabled, JavaScript enabled, excuse me, not JavaScript, they're not going to be able to go ahead and see that checkout page or that checkout little cart slider because their phone doesn't accept it, which may potentially mean that you lose sales. So again, when you're here, it's cart. It's going to be on drawer automatically. Make sure you have it on page, okay? So just make sure you have it set to page and click save and then changes have been saved. So very, very simple on how this all works. If you're interested in pretty much learning how to completely customize the theme, I will quickly show it to you right here. So for example, slide bar menu, the primary menus that you're going to be seeing on the slide bar, something like over here, right? Um, so if we were to go, let, let me just go and show you exactly where this would be in another private browser. So if we're going and securely shopping on my store, this would be the, the catalog, okay? This would be the, uh, the browser on the side. And again, I'll show you how to edit and create menus later on, but this is how you would edit them, okay? So this is the primary menu. You would go ahead and pick the menu that you want over here. An additional menu, it could be a footer menu as well. So it really depends on you. I can have none. But if I put, let's say, footer menu, there's a search. 
So again, I'm just going to click none, and this is pretty much what you want to do as well, where we have home, catalog, etc. We're going to edit all of this, but this is how you edit the menu. Now we have the slideshow, okay? Now for the slideshow, keep in mind, we can do we can do a few things over here. So store name text, so we can do custom logo, no logo, whatever it is. So that removes it. And then we have a custom logo that we can use right in the middle over here, or we can use store name text. All right, very simple. But again, you can use no logo or anything just from the get go to keep it very very simple. So if you want, you can pretty much upload an image to change the background images as well. This theme is very very easy to use. Now we have the action bar. You can create a new menu for action bar, which we will do in the following sections to come. So keep in mind, we're going to be editing all of this as we go and create our store. Now the rich text, this is pretty cool. Uh, it, it's very, very simple as well. Text, use this text to share information about your brand, etc. Right here. Use this text to share information about, about your brand, etc. You can delete this section if you just don't see it fit, okay? So if you don't see fit for that to be there, delete it. If you want it back, click add section, rich text, and then you click add. All right, then if we go back, rich text will be here. You can put it right back to where it was before, right under, hang on, let it just populate really quickly. Rich text, all right, we're gonna go ahead and do page. Uh, rather than that, we're going to add content, text. There we go, all right, so here it is. Let me just go over here, delete this, keep it simple, rich text. Home page. Let me just find out right. That's exactly where it was. Perfect. So use this text information to share. You can delete it. All right. And again, that's pretty much all you have to worry about. So let's go again down here. We're on home page. Home page is literally this right here. Um, so you can have the collections that show up first. You can have nothing show up there first if that's what you want. Uh, but you can have your home page collections. You can have your uh, you can have no collections whatsoever. You can even delete the section if you don't want it there. Um, and again, newsletter sign up. This is you can delete that as well. You can add a section. You can go out there and add a featured collection as well, which I'm going to show you how to pretty much go and set up by yourself in just a few when we add products to a collection. Very, very simple. So we're going to click save and now we have something pretty much that's there and that you can use and that is pretty much well accessible to everybody who goes and visits your store. But don't forget the footer. We're going to have to edit the footer and the footer menu as well. And we're going to edit a lot of the different type of um, outlets or more so elements on this page more than anything else. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and customize some menus so we can piece together everything right now. So now that you have your theme, what we're going to want to go ahead and do is customly design it, right? Even if I don't even think customly is a word, but we're going to customize it, all right? Customize it completely. I'm going to show you how to edit everything, such as the featured content, the images, if you want a logo, the text, every single little thing, the menus, the collections, anything that you can possibly edit on the page. And I'm going to show you why the checkout, if you have it set to cart rather than page, can hurt your conversions as well. So let's dive into that right now and show you how you can customize everything and make sure you are optimizing for the highest conversions possible. So now let's go ahead and pretty much piece together some menus. We're going to go back to Shopify and check this out. Ready for this? What you want to do is you can do a few things, okay? Now you can pretty much go and customize your theme. If you want it to go this way, let me just show you over here. All right, customize theme. If you wanted to edit your menus through, uh, let me go over here. Where is it? Let's go sidebar menu. Let's go edit menu. You can click edit menus through there. Or what you can do is if you go back and go to navigation, you're at the same exact location. So again, let's focus on the main menu at first. So we're going to click edit menu. So what we can do is add menu item. And we can have a few things that are done right here. So we can do, let's say, um, you want it to have refund policy, all right? So refund policy, it would be a link on your on your uh, on your page. Let's go just go put Google.com for now, and then we're gonna have terms of service, all right? And again, it'll actually appear in here as well. So web address, we're gonna put Google.com because this is what we're gonna do. You're gonna love this, all right? Save menu. Now, if we were to go right over here you're going to see that the menu is going to be populated automatically as well. So refund policy, terms of service, etc. But how do we actually go out there and add these type of pages so they're there? Well, take a look at this. We're going to click add page and we're just going to type in refund policy. Now, look at this, okay? What I want you to do is go to settings, okay? And open this in a new tab. Open settings in a new tab because this is what I want to show you right over here. 
you're going to go ahead and again, you're going to run through pretty much everything, but checkout is where I want you to be. Check out, okay, scroll down to a refund privacy in terms of service statements, click generate refund, generate privacy policy, generate terms of service. Now, generating a refund policy, I want you to copy everything in here, go back to the pages, add page, refund policy, add the content, okay, and what we're going to do is click on save. Now, automatically, we're about to get a page URL over here, ready? View on your store, view on your online store. So here we go, it's a refund policy. Let's head back over to the navigation and just click edit menu on the main menu. And then what we're gonna do is under the refund policy, what you can go ahead and do is you can choose page, right? And then select your page refund policy, or you can go and put a web address and link it back. That's how I like to do it just because of it's simple. I don't have to click on more things. I can just copy and paste. But for this reason, I'm gonna click on refund policy as well. Now here's the thing, ready for this? I'm gonna go down to terms of service. I'm gonna copy the terms of service and I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna go back to pages, okay? I'm gonna click add page and I'm gonna put terms of service, all right? And then I'm gonna click save and there we are. Terms of service, view on your store, navigation, we're gonna click edit. And then as a matter of fact, our refund policy, let's say we don't want it there anymore. We're gonna click the trash button and then over here we're gonna to go to pages and then we're gonna click terms of service. I'm gonna click save menu, all right? Now take a look at this. If we go back to navigation, we click on edit footer, we're gonna add a few menus, okay? We're gonna add page, all right? We're gonna click refund policy. So let's go ahead and put refund policy and let's do the same thing for our terms of service at the bottom. And then what we're gonna do is one more right over here we're going to take the privacy policy and do the same exact thing. We're going to go to pages, all right? And then we're going to put privacy policy. We're going to paste this in here, keeping it very, very simple. And then we're going to click view on your online store. We're going to go back to our navigation over here, click edit menu. And then what we're going to do, add menu item, page, here we go, privacy policy, and click save menu. Now again, all of your menus have been updated. All of your menus have been updated 100%. So if we're gonna go over here, we have home, catalog, terms of service, etc. That's on this bar, don't forget, you also have another menu over here. Now if we go to the bottom, we have search, refund policy, terms of service, and privacy policy as well. They have all been updated for you. But let me just show you this over here right now. We're gonna click customize theme and take a look. Remember we have different menus, right? So we have a sidebar menu and we have an action bar. Our action bar, we're gonna go and click edit menu. Now take a look at this, okay? What we're gonna do is click on navigation and we're gonna add menu. And we're gonna call this action bar. Okay, now what we're gonna do for the action bar is we're gonna go ahead and put, basically, um, we could do either all products or collections. Okay, so collections, we can select the collection from home page, or we can put all products, or we can do a specific product, all right? So browse all products, all right? Let's not forget, we can do that. Um, let's see here, browse all products, or we can pretty much do, or you can put browse or um, catalog, Catalog, collections, collection, go home page collection. We're gonna to have to edit that, etc. So once we go back over here, let's go to back to action bar. We're gonna click on action bar, and we have over here a catalog and collections. And you can add whatever you want over here as well. So just keep in mind that your actual home page bar is completely different from your action bar as well. Your action bar over here. So just keep that in mind, we're gonna click save and that's pretty much all you have to keep in the back of your mind as well. That's literally all you have to do in order to go out there and pretty much set up your entire store. Now let me go over here and go back to slideshow.
Now, let me show you this over here so you know exactly what's going on. This is the logo, okay? This right here is where your logo would be. So, for example, what I did before was I uploaded this little picture right here. I use that as an example. This is where your logo would be, okay? So, let me just go and type in custom logo, and that's where your logo would be. Now, take a look at this, okay? Take a look at this. Your content, an image, okay? So, what we're going to do is upload an image, and let's just find beach background image. So I'm just going to go and grab some random beach background image. So we're going to go and grab, um, let's just pick, this one looks really nice. So we're going to go over here and let me just drag and drop this onto my desktop. And I'm just doing this for an example for everybody. Just go over here and grab this. And here we go. And now the background is there. Now let me just quickly remove this just because of the fact that I want to show you what it looks like, all right? With, let's go with 50%, and we're going to drop, actually, you know, we'll leave the color like that. So let's say you have, I don't know, some type of um, Hawaiian shirts. You can pretty much have a logo smack dab in the middle with a darkened background and something very comforting. So we're going to click Save, and now we're going to travel back over, okay, back over to our store so I can show you what it looks like now. And here we are. Once it loads, obviously, there it is. There's our store. It's starting to come together very, very nicely. It's starting to piece together pretty amazingly well. So what we're going to be doing next is actually going ahead and downloading Oberlo and getting started running the entire application. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and install that right now. Now it's time to literally install Oberlo. Now Oberlo is very, very easy to use. And I want to make sure before we get started, you're not in Safari, you're not on Opera, you're not on you know Internet Explorer. You must be using Google Chrome. If not, this won't work for you. This just will not work. The reason being is because it's an extension that you need to add on to your Google Chrome browser in order for this to work. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and install it right now and get right to work. So next on our to-do list is actually to go ahead and install Oberlo. So we're just going to quickly run a Google search for those of you who don't know how to install it or even where to get it. Just search for Oberlo and pretty much the very first link that you're going to see right over here where it says apps.shopify.com slash Ollie. Okay, it's going to be Oberlo. So check this out. You're going to click get. Now, obviously make sure that your store name is the correct one here. So mine is the happy pitbull.myshopify.com. We're going to click login. And let me just go ahead and re-log in really quickly. And here we are. So what you want to do is once you went ahead and click get, you're going to click install app. And when it's installing, it's going to be put right inside of your store. So here it is. And we are now done with the installation. So here it is. Okay. We actually have an entire setup process that we need to go through through Oberlo. So take a look at this. We're going to go through everything here. So when it says let's get started, you have four steps to complete. So the very first step is to install Oberlo on your Shopify store. Then you want to set up your pricing rules. So you're going to actually go to open settings, okay? Very, very important. So take a look at this. Product cost times one multiplier. So say, for example, the product is $5. If you do times one, what's going to happen is it's going to go ahead and multiply it by one. So now what happens if you're going and let's say the product is $5 and you put in multiplier by two, it's going to double the price of the product as well. So for example, over here, let's say a product costs $10. It would actually be $20 inside of your store because of the fact that the multiplier is by two. Now product cost, your product compare at price. Now very important, in your store, you're going to have the actual price and the compared at price, okay? So if you want to go ahead and say, let's say you want to compare it at four times. So say the product is $10 and you're actually selling it for $20, but you can have a compared at cost of $40, okay? So keep that in mind over here. Now the advanced pricing rules, this is something that you can toggle as well, but just for now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is leave it for the global pricing rules, letting it be very, very simple for anybody to go out there and use this. So we're gonna click Save Settings inside of here, and we are done in regards to going ahead and saving our initial settings when it comes to overload. So let me just go ahead and clear this. Now, step number two that we're gonna be focusing on is clicking back inside of this little logo right here at the top. And then you're going to do install the Oberlo Chrome extension for single click product importing and order fulfillment. Make sure you are on Google Chrome. Very, very important that you're on Google Chrome and using this inside of Google Chrome. So click install Google Chrome extension and then click add extension. Okay. So it's going to happen here. 
is the following. It's going to go ahead and, so there we go. It is going to install itself. Now, really quickly, just to make sure that it actually works, what I would suggest you do is close down the browser completely, okay? So close down the browser completely, and here we go. Now we're gonna open it back up just so it can have a fresh restart. So here we go, and then we're gonna do, just open up everything we had open before. So there we go, perfect. Close out of everything else, kind of irrelevant. Just wanna make sure we are good to go. All right, so let's go to Shopify.com, and let me log right back in, and then we'll go right back to Oberlo. All right, so, and we're going to go to Apps, click on Oberlo again. It's going to take us right back to where we were, and now we have the extension installed. So the extension's already installed, but the extensions don't work in Incognito, which we are currently in. Now, all these three steps are going to be completed once you install the extension, but what I'm going to do now over here is go ahead and click find products. Take a look at this, okay? Now let's just say, because we're in Pitbull, we wanna type in, well, Pitbulls, right? We're gonna search all categories. We're just gonna run a quick search. So now what we have over here is, you can go ahead, first off, let me just go and tell you, that you can sort by price lowest to highest, seller rating volume, uh, and then valid time lowest to the highest as well. So what we wanna work with right now is volume, just to see pretty much what we have, okay, in regards to volume, meaning how much this has sold all right so really quickly we're going to open this up over here as well inside of aliexpress so we have 146 orders all right so there we go and this right here so what i'm going to do quickly is let's say we found some products let's just say um let's see over here sold the last 29 day or 30 days 29 so we're going to add to import list product added all right and let's just see let's keep going down over here pitbull mom import all right, shipping country, United States. This is something that you can do as well, all right? And there we go. It'll give you all of your shipping costs for that country as well, all right? So just keep that in mind. E-Pack, it's around $2.19. China Post, it's uh, $0. It's free, all right? So there we go. Now, keep in mind that you can go ahead and sort this a lot of different ways. You can have advanced settings as well, original price, price from $1 all the way to $3, okay? And then you can click search as well. So it'll start listing out any products from $1 to $3 that'll allow you to have smaller trinkets. It really is dependent on what you want to do as well. So keep that in mind. So right on the side over here, okay, you see where it has um, imports, right? Search products, overload supply, beta, import list. Click on import list under this little tag. Now what you wanna do is this, okay? First thing is first, you have collections. Remember the collections that we had? So if we go ahead and pretty much add this on the homepage collection, okay? And add this on the homepage collection as well, and this one on the homepage collection, and there we go. So obviously we have different products up top, which is a product, description, variants, images, etc. So what we're gonna be focusing right here is we're gonna go tab by tab to product. So the name of this product is uh, Pitbull Mom bracelet okay so type you can go ahead and just do you know bracelet all right so there we go so for tags we don't really need that it's something that you can do so pitbull mom pend uh pendant there we go so i'm just going to put necklace necklace there we go and then i'm going to do pitbull dog ring all right so we're going to type in ring and there we go now Again, for the description, we can add the description as well. So this one seems, you know, pretty fair. This one seems, again, pretty fair as well. Pretty much giving all the different um, things that are inside of this ring or that's being sold in this ring, with this ring, what it's all about, etc. So gender men, uh, gender women, gender, let me just make sure that the gender over here, gender unisex. So for here, I'm just going to put women because I want that to stand out for me. Variants, okay, let's see over here. Um, da, 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 price three ninety eight. Good. Uh, we could do. We can even do three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. All right. Three ninety nine. Compare it. Price seven ninety nine. Whoops. Seven ninety nine and seven ninety nine. All right. So there we go. SKU. We don't want this one. Okay, because that one's completely irrelevant. Let's go to variants again. All right, so variants, we have 18 gold, okay, gold plated. This is on times two. So we're going to do or 5.99. We'll do the same thing, 5.99, okay? So that's what we're going to do. Leave the price set to, uh, let's do 12.99. And then the same thing over here, 
$12.99. Now we're going to go scroll down a little bit more, go to variance on this one as well. And then variance, let's take a look at this, uh, 193, 397, or 399, whoops, 399. We're going to go ahead and 399 again, and leave 772, okay? So then we're going to go to images, all right? So let me just go over here. Images, now let's just see over here. Um, nope, we don't want this one. Uh, I thought that was, I misread that. Um, so these images, it seems like, okay, we want this image for sure. We want this image, we want this image, we want this image. And we also want these images, because why not? Good, so we have images over here. Um, it doesn't seem like we have many options when it comes to which product. Okay, it's a necklace, so it doesn't seem like we have much options in regards to that, so we'll leave it as is. Images, um, let's see, Pitbull Mom, Pitbull Mom over here. And now we are good, we're gonna click Publish to Shop, Publish All, click Yes. And now it is cur currently importing as well. So we have products in our list. So if you go to my products, right, it'll actually all be in here. It's currently all importing as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, so if you go to my products, they're all going to be in here. Pitbull dog ring, etc. Now, if you were to actually go to your shop over here, all right, let me just quickly go to my shop. And then we're going to go uh, really quickly to online store preferences and then go and get the password. So I can take a look in here. Oh, it's already in here, but here we go. All right, here we go. These are all the products that are, have just been added, as you can tell. All right, so again, uh, the images need to be updated a little bit. You want to make sure you go through this because, again, like I just showed you, that some things need to, uh, need to be updated. So, for example, this image right here would need to be updated. But we have everything here. Um, so everything is here, all right? So antique, bronze, plated, etc. So it's all here, all inside, and that's pretty much how you go and install and use Oberlo as well. So it's pretty simple. Now again, I just covered how you can import. If you wanna see one more time, what I would suggest you do is click right here, search products, if you're looking to search products. Now again, let's just go and type in Pitbull one more time. This is how you're gonna do it. Pitbull, click search, all right, there you are. And again, when we went ahead and we found these products, what we're going to do is take a look at one more and personalized car sticker. We're going to click product selected over here. And then we're going to go back to the import list. Okay, now your import list should be populating as well. So take a look at this. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is pretty much group our products into collections so you can sort them on your home page or any pages that you want. And we're also going to work with the shipping settings pretty soon, but keep in mind right now I want to show you the collections and how they work and how you should be integrating with them as well. And then after, we're going to dive really deep into the shipping settings. And now really quickly, just to show you one more time, just so we can go ahead and pretty much go, what I'm going to do over here is go back to my store. Now, I'm gonna be doing something at my store that's a little different. What I'm gonna be doing is clicking on home and I'm gonna show you something over here. So now what you wanna do is take a look at this. I'm gonna show you a cool little shortcut. Go to products, right? And then once you're in products, go to collections. Take a look at this, create collection, and then put in Pitbull Mothers or whatever you wanna name it, okay? Your collection is just gonna be a little grouping of products for you, okay? So over here, Pitbull Mothers, all Pitbull Mother merchandise, whoops, merchandise. I definitely didn't spell that right, so let's just go and run a quick search. Merchandise, oh, I guess I did spell it right. Look at that, first thing I ever spelled right. Conditions, we're gonna do manual, okay? So we're gonna do manual, save, and there we go. So take a look at this, inside of Oberlo, what we're gonna do, really quickly, let me just go and try to refresh this. Actually, I'm gonna reopen it over here because I just added this in. So we're gonna go back to apps, click on Oberlo, and over here, what's gonna happen is if you go to the side over here, import list, it should be up here as well when you're browsing through. What you're gonna wanna do is, for your collections, put Pitbull Mothers, okay? Pitbull Mothers, pretty simple. Now for the type, you can just put sticker or whatever it is, right? Um, so over here, personalized car, personalized Pitbull car sticker. All right, pretty simple. So car sticker. Car sticker, there we go. So then we're gonna edit the description again, okay, good enough. Variations, we're gonna make it $3, because why not? $3 compared to $6, and then again, we're gonna do $3 compared to $6. All right, images, let's make sure all these images are up to date, we're gonna be using this one. Also gonna be using this one as well. And we're gonna be using that one, and that one as well. Now what we're gonna do is just hit push to shop, okay? 
So now the push is done, what I want to do is my product list and take a look at my products again. Now what I'm going to do quickly is basically click on, click on this right here and now what I'm going to do is pretty much this. I'm going to click on action and what you can do and now what you want to do is this. Take a look at this, all right? You see this little edit icon? Click that little edit icon and it's going to open up inside of Shopify. Now what you want to take a look at is over here, right? Let's say we want to change the collections. So let's take a look at Pitbull Mothers and we're going to go ahead and save that. And now the collection's under Pitbull Mothers. Now again, remember before we were setting up collections inside of our store for a reason. I want you to click on online store, go to themes and hit customize theme again. Take a look at this. Now we're going to customize our theme. But what we're going to do is down here, or as a matter of fact, yeah, you know what? As a matter of fact, we're going to go ahead and do featured collection and we're going to change. Okay, we're going to change the collection to Pitbull Mothers. Now you're going to see this has been updated over here to Pitbull Mothers. We're going to click save. So again, that's how the collections work inside the theme as well, which is very, very simple and very, very easy to use as well. So again, that's how you're going to go out there and use Oberlo. And Oberlo makes it very, very simple to use and pretty much very simple for you to go out there and pretty much import any product automatically. But of course, Oberlo has settings. And there's some settings that I would like to go ahead and talk about in, well, right now. So now what we're going to be talking about is the shipping settings in the Contact Us and About Us page. Now when it comes down to shipping settings, it can be a little confusing. A lot of people don't really understand how the shipping settings work or, you know, Shopify, you can have standard shipping, free shipping, a bunch of different shipping variables. But what we're going to be talking about is the shipping settings, the free plus shipping settings through Shopify and the ones they offer as well. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and show you how to install those shipping settings and how they all work. And then after that, we're going to dive into the Contact Us page and the About Us page as well that you're going to be automatically inputting into your store to help you out and kind of help your customers navigate along the way. So next, we're going to be talking about overall store shipping. So over here, let me go back to my store really quickly. And what we're going to do is click on right over here is settings. And when you're in settings, go to shipping. Now there's tons of ways that you can use shipping, but what I'm going to be doing is using this shipping setting. Take a look at this, okay? Click on add shipping zone. Now inside of Shopify, there's a few things that you can be doing over here in order to go ahead and set up your shipping rates. What I'm going to do now is talk about going out there and creating free plus shipping, uh, well, kind of rules. So what we're going to do over here is pretty simple. First off, make sure you're going to have uh, kind of static rates in here. Now what you can do is delete these zones, right? Make sure those are deleted because we want to keep it very, um, very focus on what we're going to do. So we're going to click on add shipping zone. Now we're going to call this free shipping. Okay. Countries, we're going to click the United States and Canada. Now you can click all of, all of North America. If you want, you can do all of Europe, whatever it is, whatever you see free. Now price based rates, we're going to click add rate and just put free shipping. And we're also going to go ahead and minimum order price zero. And then Maximum order price, no limit, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do free shipping rate, click done, and now click save, and we have the shipping, free plus shipping, it's free shipping, that's all we have to focus on. And that's how we're gonna go out there and have free plus shipping inside of our store. But another thing that I wanna to talk to you about is the checkout settings, okay? The checkout as well as payments. So first thing is first, we'll start off with payments, it's first on our list. Nine out of 10 times, you're gonna to wanna to use Shopify payments. Now, for those of you that aren't eligible to work with Stripe because of where you live, I would suggest working with PayPal. Now, if you don't have access to PayPal or Stripe payments, I would suggest working with a partner who does. Finding somebody who you're able to work with very closely to go and create a store and learn how to do all of this using their payment and merchant information as well. That's something I would highly suggest you do. So I would also suggest using Shopify payments. Around 70% of your sales will come from Shopify payments if you're working with PayPal and Shopify payments, also known as Stripe. So again, 70% of your sales will come via this route. Now, PayPal doesn't really like the drop shipping model. They're not very fond of the model. So if you're using PayPal, just be warned and forewarned that I told you that they're not very happy with the drop shipping model because they don't like the shipping times it takes to get the product to the customer. So just keep that in mind. Now there's also different type of opportunities and different merchants you can use, Amazon payments, Bitcoins, and a bunch of other different ways to pay. Duola, Coinbase, again, all these different type of coins that you can use. And it's very, very easy and very, very smart to use these as well. Manual payments, you're not really going to be using 
manual payments as well. Payment authorization, leave it to automatic. Now for checkout, all right, we're gonna go through all this. <clears throat> Accounts are disabled. <coughs> Now you're gonna leave it set to accounts are disabled. But I would also suggest accounts are optional, but for in our case, okay, because we're creating a store very quickly, accounts are disabled. Now form options require first and last name just for chargeback purposes. In case you ever get chargebacks, we just wanna go ahead and have first and last name. Company hidden, but what I would suggest doing is optional as well. Some people wanna send it to a company, maybe it's a gift, etc. Address line two, optional of course. Phone number, optional. Order processing, use the shipping address as a billing address by default, okay, it makes it a lot easier. And by default, customer agrees to receive promotional emails. Right now, it might be set to by default customer does not agree or disable the hidden field, or might, nothing might be even checked. Make sure by default it's agreed upon, all right? So you can go ahead and send them promotional based emails. When you make a sale, you can have your post sale sequence set up, etc. So after an order has been paid, do not automatically fulfill it, right? After an order has been uh, fulfilled or paid, automatically archive the order, yes, that's good. Now additional scripts, you don't need to worry about that. Check out language. You can go ahead and have it set to English. And over here, we're gonna generate refund, generate sample privacy, privacy policy and terms of service. And then we're gonna click save. And that's all you need to worry about for payments and checkout. So that's how you go ahead and edit shipping and the payments tab and the checkout tab that you need to know as well. Next, I'm gonna talk about an about us and contact us page. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go and pretty much use an about us page or create an about us page. So if we go back to our online store and we click on pages over here, I was gonna have blog posts for some reason, but over here, what I wanna click on is add page and we're just gonna write about us, okay? Now about us, you can have pretty much very simple contact details. For example, um, or I'm sorry, for the about us, you can have an about us, and then for a contact us, you can have a contact us. So about us, give a short description about your company or your brand, all right? And again, I would suggest making it two paragraphs max of four to five sentences in each, in each paragraph. So I'm gonna click save, all right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and go back to pages and we're gonna click about us, all right, about us. And then this is address, phone number, email. Click save, you can fill all that information out yourself. And then we're gonna to go to online store, we're gonna to go to theme, we're gonna customize theme, and then back over here, remember before we were setting up all the menus, we're gonna go ahead and click sidebar menu, and remember main menu, we're gonna click edit menu over here. So the main menu, we're gonna add items, and then we're gonna go page, all right? And then we're gonna do about us, so we have two about us pages for some reason, all right? So I didn't realize that. So then over here, we're gonna to go to uh, page again, whoops about us and actually as a matter of fact it should be a contact about us and a contact us page so that was my mistake on my end so over here if i go back to pages about us this is this is all we need to edit this is contact all right so again doing this live means i might be messing up here and there which of course you just saw so there we go customize theme all right Sidebar, and again, we can just go to menus if we wanted to, but I like to go through the theme just so I can see it updated in real time as well. So we're gonna go page, and I'm gonna click add an item and do another page, select page, we're gonna do about us and then contact us. We're gonna click save menu, all right? And there we go. So right over here, if we were to go and just pretty much let it stay live, sidebar menu, and then we can go and pretty much put none, and then if we go back, put main menu, it's all here. All right, so it's all there. Now we're just gonna pretty much slide it out, see how it looks, all right? And then a little slider again. And that's pretty much it, okay? In order to go out there and create an About Us and Contact Us page, it's very, very simple. Now you can have apps that go and create a Contact Us page for you that have like this little form. But what I would suggest doing is just having an email, letting people email you as well. So again, on to our next segment over here. So one of the last things that you wanna to do to tie this all up is set up a custom domain. Now setting up a custom domain is very, very simple. It's very easy as well. Let me show you how this is all done in order to tie up everything that we just did inside of your store. So next what we're gonna be doing is actually going out there and showing you how to install a domain. So check this out over here. You're gonna to go to online store and just click on domains over here. Now when it comes down to domains, it's actually fairly, fairly simple. You're gonna click buy new domain or connect an existing domain that you might have purchased from Namecheap or wherever it is. But for simplicity purposes, I'm gonna say buy new domain and let's just say um, 
Pitbull Lovers. Okay, obviously it's not available. Definitely not available. But check availability. And it's already taken. And if it were to go ahead and let me just put ZZZ because nobody will pretty much get that domain. Nobody wants that domain. And here it is. You just enter your card number, you purchase it, you confirm, and then it automatically links up with your Shopify store. And that's all you have to do in order to go out there and link up a domain. That's all you have to do. So next what we're going to talk about is installing your Facebook pixel inside of your store to hard code it and make sure everything's running smoothly. The last two things we're going to talk about is installing your pixel and actually going out there and getting rid of your password for your store. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and show you right now how we're going to work with Facebook, Google Analytics, and how we're going to remove your password from your store as well. So let's dive into that right now. So now what I'm going to demonstrate is how to actually go out there and install your pixel. So take a look at this. Inside of your Facebook Ads Manager, what you can do is click on your ads account, then go inside, click on this little drop down, right? You can go to all tools and then under assets you have pixels and this is what's gonna load. What's most important that you grab is this right here, this number right here, this pixel ID. You're gonna copy it and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna head back into your store. Now take a look at this. You're gonna click on online store, you're gonna click preferences, you're gonna scroll down to Facebook pixel, paste it in over here, I'm just adding a few more numbers in just so my real pixel doesn't get messed up. And click on save and automatically your pixel will be installed in your Shopify store. It's that easy, literally, it's that easy. And you can do the same thing with Google Analytics. So what you would do is go to Google Analytics and sign up and just go ahead and simply put, paste the code that they give you. Now Google Analytics allows you to track in real time who's on your site, what they're browsing, et cetera. And it also gives you some pretty in-depth data. Now going out there and installing Google Analytics is very simple. Just make sure you have a Google AdWords account, or I'm sorry, a Google account, and you can log into Google Analytics as well. So if you were to go over here, Google Analytics, what you're gonna wanna do is google.com slash analytics. There's a little drop down that you're gonna choose, and make sure you choose analytics. They have a lot of options now that everybody can use. Make sure you're choosing analytics, all right? So they have analytics, tag manager, whatever it is. So when you're here, make sure you're inside of analytics and you have your stuff being tracked inside of here. So again, when you're actually going out there, okay, and using analytics, um, I don't even know what site, oh, okay, this is Ecom Dudes. Um, so essentially what you can do, um, let me just go over here, Dirty Gamers, one that we use as well. Uh, so Shop Dirty Gamer, you can add new sites in here, etc. So it really is dependent on you, on what you want to use when you're going out there and installing your pixel if you want to use or do not want to use your Google Analytics. So if you wanted to go ahead and add new, you'd go to admin, and then what you would do is you'd simply go and pretty much add a new account. Uh, you can actually add different accounts as well. So you can create a new account, and then it would provide you a code. You'd go in and enter all this and then click get tracking ID. That tracking ID you would paste right inside your Google Analytics. It's very, very simple on how to install this. Nothing too complicated as well. So what I'm gonna do right now is after this is all installed, what you wanna do is click on online store. Now this is very, very important as well. You go to preferences, and this is where your password is. Now to take off your password, what you need to do is make sure you signed up with a plan for Shopify. Very, very important. In order to go out there and unlock your store, if we were to go to my store right now, it is going to be locked, no questions about it, given the fact that I don't have an actual Shopify plan yet. And I'd have to enter using my password Breeze in order to go ahead and take a look at all the products that I have inside my catalog, inside of everywhere that I have on my store. So again, the only way for you to remove this is by actually going into settings, okay, and going into account, and then upgrading and choosing what you want to go ahead and, and have as your, um, Azure account subscription service. All right, so again, it's all under here, invoicing and fees, store status, etc. So in order to go live, you're gonna go have to pretty much uh, make sure you're paying $29 for Shopify. So your password um, page can be customized. If you want, you can pick a plan over here, and then you pick the $29 a month package. And that's all you have to do in order to go ahead and get your entire store set up from start to finish using Overload. That's literally all you have to do. Now the last part of this, okay, to tie this all together, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and place a test order through our store and use Overload to fulfill it. So again, 
Let's go out there right now and I'm going to go into my computer. I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to be using overload to tie this all together and how you're going to have an automated store completed for you, literally working for you around the clock without having to go out there and kind of, you know, rack your brains up trying to figure out how this all works. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and uh, get this done right now. So I went ahead and placed a test order on my store. Now, keep in mind, as you can tell up here, I have the Oberlo extension right now. Now, very, very important on how this is going to work. Ready? We're going to go to apps. And since you have an order waiting to be fulfilled, you're going to go and click the Oberlo app and go into the app and take a look at the products that need to be fulfilled. So go to to order. Okay. Now, what you're going to want to do is click this order product. Now, this will only work if you have the Oberlo uh, extension installed. Now again, very important, okay? Uh, let me just log in over here. All right. So now what you're gonna wanna do is click on, okay, the order product and it's gonna do everything for you. Now this is only going to work if you have the Oberlo app installed. All right, very, very important. So pretty much just keep in mind I don't have a payment method installed on this account. So what it would happen is everything would be going through this and then in the messages you'd put being sent to my customer. Please do not add receipt. Right? Please do not add receipt. Very simple. Right? We're going to go ahead and click that and then you'd enter your payment method or other payment methods, whatever it is, and then confirm and pay. That's all you have to do. And after that's done, let's say I went ahead and I ordered it. Of course, I'm not going to order this for myself because, well, I don't really need to. But that's all you'd have to do. And once that's done, I click mark the shipped, right? And then tracking code, let's say I get a tracking code back. And, and that just so happens to be the tracking code. Mark is shipped. And now the order has been fulfilled. And that's all you have to do. So if we go back to orders over here, all right, let me just mark is shipped again. Just pretty much click on that, mark the shipped. You can't fulfill the orders are probably already fulfilled already. That's why. So there we go. It just took a little bit of time to update in the system. So that's all you have to do in order to go ahead and use Oberlo. That's literally all you have to do. It's just that simple. Make sure that your test, uh, that your actual, not your test, but more so your Oberlo account and you're using it on Google Chrome. It needs to be Google Chrome. If you're not using Google Chrome, it will not work. Okay. So keep that in mind. So again, I hope you learned a lot on how to set up Oberlo and how to set up an automated drop shipping store in order for you to go out there and pretty much start making sales and having these products fulfilled for you automatically. So without any further ado, my name is Dan De Silva, and this was the automation and Oberlo Shopify store series that we went ahead and set up for you through Ecom Dudes. And if you have any questions, just take a look at EcomDudes.com. You can also go on there and see how we turned $300 into 12000 using advertisements on Instagram and our Facebook ad strategies and everything else. So without any further ado, my name is Dan DeSilva, the CEO of Ecom Dudes. Thank you so much for coming to this video. Give me a thumbs up if you want more videos exactly like these. And I look forward to speaking to you very, very soon. All right. So there's a lot that we literally covered here today. I hope you learned a lot as well. And I just told you before, go and check out Ecom Dudes if you want to see all the amazing case studies we have, the walkthroughs, and more videos like this one as well. So without any further ado, go ahead, go out there and learn as much as you possibly can from us. Go to EcomDudes.com, check out our, our blog. And if you want to join the academy and join other individuals who are going out there earning thousands of dollars a day using e-commerce, what I suggest you do is go to ecomdudes.com slash academy slash enroll. And the links for everything is going to be in the description as well as a link for a Shopify uh, or I'm sorry, a Shopify discount. So again, my name is Dan DeSilva, the CEO of Ecom Dudes. I look forward to seeing you very, very soon.